Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so we're going to uh, basically do three demos uh, today, uh, if the demo gods are with us. Um, we're going to uh, have uh, a Raspberry Pi 3 communicate <coughs> with a micro bit over Bluetooth. We're going to have a Raspberry Pi talk to another Raspberry Pi. And finally, we're going to uh, finish off with a phone uh, communicating over Bluetooth to, uh, to uh, this Raspberry Pi again. Okay, so this all started a few years ago when I was helping a school with a project. And we had some people from industry come and talk to them. And uh, one of the talks was about Bluetooth. Uh, and people, or the, the students, got very excited about this. And actually it turned, turned out quite difficult to uh, really do uh, very much at a, a fairly uh, abstract level without getting uh, very deep technical. So this has kind of been a three year journey that myself and Barry and, and Mark sort of has come on more, more lately to help me out uh, to, uh, to try and make it simpler to use Bluetooth in STEM activities. So, uh, so yeah, I'm Barry, that's my Twitter handle, and uh, I'm Mark. So, it's about Bluetooth. Uh, so, Bluetooth, uh, although it feels like it's been around forever and we have it on our, on our phones, it's actually a rapidly changing uh, standard or developing. It, it's still uh, going, going forward uh, on, on the Linux, Machine, so on Raspberry Pis, uh, Blue Z is the uh, is the stack and the underlying uh, thing that's sort of in the kernel <coughs> doing all the heavy lifting for us. And really, what we're doing with the Bluetooth bindings is working on top of uh, top of that. Um, so one of the problems with it changing uh, dramatically is a lot of the information that's out on the internet already. Uh, is is wrong or out of date. Uh, so often you'll you'll try things and it, it won't be relevant. And indeed, uh, the demo that we're we're running here, we're on a newer version of Bluesy than comes as default on the Raspberry Pi. So we do have to install uh, the latest uh, version, uh, which involves compiling it, some dependencies as well. And on a Pi 3, there's a, there's a bug that has to be patched uh, as well. So uh, it's, um, it can be slightly painful to, uh, to install and, and compile and everything. Uh, and, you know, I think probably what we're really doing on this project uh, is kind of trying to at least document that so so people have a recipe to follow and we'll talk about the, the work that we're doing on the on the Blue Zero library. Uh, and we have a whole page dedicated just to trying to install uh, Blue Z or the latest version. Uh, also uh, Bluetooth is developing so uh, most Bluetooth things what we tend to call classic on the left, so wired headsets, uh, exchanging files between your, your phone and uh, maybe a desktop computer, wireless game controllers, wireless speakers, they are sort of 2.1 of the spec, so what we call classic. Uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, I guess we were talking about this the other day, came out about five years ago, um, is, is the 4.0 version of the spec. And this is really what this demo is going to focus on uh, because of things like the BBC Microbit uses it. Um, and there's Bluetooth 5 coming along uh, soon. Uh, so again, that's, that's going to be uh, sort of more change in there. Um, so BLE is really good for, for battery powered uh, things like this. So this is running off a coin coin cell at the moment and will last you know months and months and months on that that coin cell um, it's you know it, you can be transferring small 
amounts of data very frequently, um, or whereas uh, the classic, it opens a stream and it's constantly exchanging information, so that's kind of what drains the battery because the radio is always on. Bluetooth, low energy, uh, switches the radio off a lot. So, Bluetooth and, and Python. Um, I think if you came along to Carlos's presentation earlier, uh, he talked about uh, Node and JavaScript, and, and really there's a guy called Sandeep uh, Mystery, uh, or Misty, uh, that, uh, that <coughs> sort of got into this first and has done a fantastic job with the Node uh, libraries. The Python libraries really haven't uh, caught up. Uh, so there was a guy called Ian Harvey that did BluePy, uh, and that's, that's a very good uh, library uh, to look at uh, and use. Um, it has some limitations. Uh, since we started doing uh, Blue Zero, which is the one that, that we're going to use today, Adafruit have started to do a Bluetooth uh, low energy uh, library as well. Um, and again, that, that has some issues. We'll talk about them as we uh, go on. So one of the things we're trying to do with, uh, with Blue Zero is have different levels of the API. So when you're working in STEM projects, uh, students don't necessarily want to learn about uh, big endian, little endian, you know, byte orders, uh, and all these kind of things. They, they want to be able to connect and exchange information. And so really we're looking at level one. Um, we want it to be Pythonic. We want people to not need to know about all the lower level Bluetooth stuff and that kind of thing. It, it really is sort of targeted at a piece of hardware. Obviously within the library, uh, we would hope that people want to become more advanced so our next level is called level 10. Now originally we had level one, two, and three, and me and Mark would never remember which way round it was meant to be. And so we've come up with this level one, 10, and 100, and we roughly equate it to how many lines of code you're likely to need to write to, to get something to work. Uh, and that kind of stuck with us, so we, we can remember this. Uh, so level 10, it, it's really uh, trying to be Pythonic still, uh, but now you're, you're starting to reveal some of the Bluetooth uh, things about it, so services, characteristics, UUIDs, by orders, uh, those, those kind of things. And then at level 100, um, you know, the, the ideal thing would be that eventually Blue Zero gets out of the way and you're just using Blue Z directly and, and those bindings that it has, has there. Um, you know, it uses the Dbus uh, messaging system on Linux, uh, which isn't Pythonic. You know, function names aren't there. There's event loops. There's lots of low-level stuff that really we want to to try and avoid uh, people having to know. But if they want to, we want to to help them get there. So I'm I'm going to try and not talk about too much technical detail, but there is is just a couple of bits of terminology that might be worthwhile just uh, running through. So uh, doing uh, communication things, which is uh, what Bluetooth is, is, is always hard because you need something at both, both ends of, of the communication. Um, and uh, there's, uh, so you can have connectionless Bluetooth. Um, and one end of that will be called a broadcaster, so that's just transmitting messages, and that's typically uh, often referred to as a beacon. And then you have observer at the other end, uh, which is called a scanner, and so that will receive uh, only. But what we're going to do today is really uh, connected uh, experiments, uh, demos. Uh, so. One is called one end is called a peripheral, so this would typically be the, the micro bit or a fit bit or something like that that will <coughs> advertise its service, and then you'll have a central which is typically your phone 
uh, and that will connect to the peripheral. So it would go out, look at services, connect to it. And when we were speaking about those libraries earlier, so the, the Adafruit and the Blue Pi one, they both can only do the central role. And in Blue Zero, we only have a level one API for central roles for the micro bit and for the, for the blinked LED strip. Uh, the peripheral side of it, which we are running here, we're very much at level 100. It is very hard to, to abstract uh, that away. Uh, but we do have some examples in the library. So, the moment of truth. Yeah, see whether it works. <laughs> <laughs> so I um, stand here and look beautiful and hold this up. Yeah, so we're going to run, run our first demo. First demo. Um, we've got a Pi here, which is going to run, it's running the Python Blue Zero code in the central role. We've got the micro bit, which is running as a peripheral, advertising its services on BLE. <coughs> so, hopefully. So, is, is everybody aware of IPython notebooks? So, so this is, is running Python, but rather than maybe what you're used to seeing, uh, we can actually uh, execute code sort of line, line by line. So we're going off, we've been pulled with the microbit library, uh, we're, we're setting up our, our microbit here. And I should say that uh, there's Bitty software, I don't know if anybody's been doing stuff with microbit, but there's a company out there called Bitty that have a very good um, app for the phones for controlling or doing some stuff on the, on the micro bit. Um, they have a hex file with all the Bluetooth services exposed of the, the micro bit. So we, we have just installed that hex file on here. We've done no programming on here whatsoever. We've just taken the standard hex file. Sorry. That's okay. So, so we've taken, this is our level one API for the micro bit. And we instantiate a micro bit. And when we, when we initialize it like that, um, we give it a name, this micro bit has got Pewter in its name, um, and it goes off and looks on the BLE to find that device. Um, so we can then connect to it. Drum roll, everyone. And, and the C comes up on the micro bit, and we all sit here relieved. Um, it takes a little bit longer for this because it's now interrogating the micro bit and looking for all its services. Um, so it takes a little bit longer than the C just popping up. And then we can do something like display some text and hopefully it's going to scroll a hello world. Which... No, please save your applause for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are all sorts of... I think we've exposed most of the um, services that you can access on the micro bit um, in the API. So we could also um, read its temperature sensor. Let's do this backwards. 22 degrees. Not, not too bad. <laughs> so that is actually the temperature of the chip on there rather than the, the room temperature. Yeah. Um, and then as another demo on it, um, so Barry has uh, a speaker hooked up to the PWL output on the on the blue zip on the micro bit. That was very, very brief, but I hope you heard a beat. Um, so that's, that's us with a central role with our Python library connecting to somebody else's BLE. What we can also do, oh, we can then finish and disconnect. So. We've got D now. The, we can then move on to the peripheral stuff. What we've now got is a Raspberry Pi set up, um, and it's running the peripheral, a peripheral mode. Um, as you said, it's some code written in the level 100 API, so not particularly simple, but doable. Um, this is experimental in Bluesy, which is why we have to go off and get the latest version and compile it and all the rest of it, um, because it's still not quite stable in the Bluesy, in the Bluesy stack. Um, hopefully someday they'll finish experimenting with it. Um, so similar kind of idea, import the level one API 
in the central role. Um, Initialize it this time, we're looking for its uh, Bluetooth address. And it goes off, and it's about 10 seconds, I think. We, we should add some more, um, you know, I found this device. It's, it's a bit less reassuring on there, because there's no yeah. C that comes up to say it's connected or anything. Um, so then, we have a go at connecting. <laughs> Hopefully it will connect. So once it connects, it, it interrogates the device that it has and finds out all the services that are available uh, that uh, that are available over Bluetooth. And it doesn't like it. I love it when a demo goes <laughs> well. Yeah. Terminal and show uh, the Bluetooth uh, command tool. Uh, we can have a go at that. So, so when you go and Google uh, on the uh, on the internet, you'll um, you'll see uh, lots of things about uh, GAT tool and stuff like that. Uh, that. Once, once Bluesy went above version five, and I think 5.23 is the default version on the, um, uh, on the, on the Pi, uh, you should use uh, Bluetooth control, the command line tool. So I wonder if the battery's gone flat. And yeah. The Pi doesn't look like John. No, I think I think the battery pack. I've been stood there holding it too long. Do you want to get back to that? Yeah. Yeah, so you can see we we've done some scanning there uh, and we know the address that we were looking for was zero 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 two. There, there, there. And, uh, and that hasn't appeared in there. So if we, we go back to, well, yeah, do, do a scan, see if we can, um, still boosting that, I think. Mean. Uh. Need to make sure you turn the scan off. So because the D-Bus messaging system is being used underneath, you can see when we actually start doing the scan with our Python code in the Bluetooth control line uh, program, it was showing uh, what was being found as well. Oh, let me uh, go back here. Uh, that's more promising. Yeah. So we've just got a little loop here that's just going to flash the LED. <laughs> Yeah. So how many hundred pounds worth of kit to flash on LED? <laughs> <laughs> not, not as many as you'd think. <laughs> so, and then we can disconnect from it. Yeah. So, Barry's going to talk about how you connect to that then from a phone. Yeah. I'll let you do that. Yeah, okay. Um, so, so one of the great things about uh, using, uh, using Bluetooth can you switch the other camera? Yeah. The other one. yeah. Yeah, so, oh, so what, yeah, one of the great things about using uh, Bluetooth is uh, that you, uh, you have uh, your phone which typically has Bluetooth. And as you can see, I've, uh, I've got quite a lot of uh, different Bluetooth. So all of these things on here are all kind of Bluetooth various apps 
uh, one, one way or another. But there's one from Nordic Semiconductor, uh, which will go off and find all the Bluetooth devices around. And I guess this isn't going to work quite as well as I've envisaged. But the one at the top I can see here, um, physical web. If you haven't read about the physical web, I suggest uh, it's uh, very good. Um, you should go and read about it. Oh, there you go. And so you can see we've got a physical web beacon. So, more talk, less action. Oh, less talk, more action. Uh, there we go. Um, it was working on it. So, so uh, so we can see that there's a, a beacon here, which is that pie advertising uh, itself. And in particular, it's advertising a URL, so a web address. So I can say open that, uh, and there's a company called uh, Bubbleworks that had written uh, a web app that uh, will control uh, blinked LEDs on, on lots of different hardware. Um, and um, well, you can't see, but I, I can tell it to to connect, and in there it, it's it's got that point address uh, selected. So I can say pair, and we're now uh, connected. So I can choose uh, red, and then I can say which LED I want to light up, and. I can do lots of, uh, you know, choose different colours and, uh, and get them all, all to light up there. So as I'm hitting it here, uh, it's JavaScript underneath the web page, which is using the phone's uh, Bluetooth to connect to that. And again, part, part of the thing with Bluetooth is as long as you know what the service is, uh, are called, you can uh, connect to it with any device that supports it. I can switch off all of them, turn on certain things like that. So that was uh, that was what what we were going to demo today. Um, so we had had a few hiccups along the way, but um, the, what I think uh, you can see is that what we're trying to do is get a very simple interface that you can write in Python uh, that would allow you to connect. Uh, between the Raspberry Pi uh, and different combinations of uh, of of things. So, uh, can we go back to the weekend? I saw you nodding off there. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> still not to stop. Uh, oh, okay. So, questions? Yes. Do you know the Bluetooth um, utility in App Inventor? I, I do, I do, uh, and sadly, um, it is working with classic uh, Bluetooth, right. um, and so it, it isn't necessarily useful for, for things like the microbit, which is uh, working with, with BLE or, or 4.0 4 plus, uh, <coughs> so I, uh, I have used it, but it, it's... Uh, yeah. Okay. So there's no update coming out from that. <coughs> I I haven't checked in the forums for for a couple of years, but there was lots of people asking. But um, as as Mark and myself have found out, uh, it's actually not as trivial as we had all hoped yeah. to to do these things. Yes. Um. Presumably the pie is set up to just automatically pair with whatever asks it to pair. To 
even in Earth Race Unix. So that's a good question around security uh, and all of that kind of kind of thing. So the peripheral uh, advertises that it's here and it decides whether it's going to let things connect all right. to to it or not. Um, <coughs> So right now we have the micro bit with all the security bits turn, turned off. If you're, if you're going to do an IoT product that you're going to sell in the marketplace, not a good thing to do. Uh, but, um, but, but for what we're trying to do to simplify the connection process, yes. etc., then uh, yes, we have it off on the micro bit right now. Likewise, on that, Pi that's playing the peripheral role, uh, we, we have the security turned off. And, and again, that's one of the reasons. Uh, so the blue Pi, the last time I checked, uh, what they've done is they've taken a snapshot of Bluesy and put it inside their library. And that didn't support all the security settings. And again, whilst you may not want to do that when you're starting, uh, hopefully very quickly you'll do, be doing projects where you do care about the security uh, and so that's why we want to build on top of uh, Bluesy rather than taking a snapshot or building some other thing and likewise I think that's one of the issues with the node uh, library as well I don't believe it supports the security settings so again this is one of the reasons I've taken on so much pain <laughs> rather than just uh, you know Using their libraries. Any more questions? Yeah. On. Um, uh, if you've got a beacon or multiple beacons to a scanner, do you know? Have you got anything to say about the timing delay between sending sending a signal from the beacon to be when it's picked up by the scanner? I'm thinking of sort of wireless sensor type applications. Uh, so, so by default, there is no timing information. Yeah. Um, so I I did. Uh, uh, a project where when people walked around a, a venue, uh, depending on their proximity to the beacon, they would hear different things in, in their headphones. Uh, and that uses the signal strength uh, to, to work out some kind of proximity. But I don't think there's any timing information by default in there. Uh, the, the, the biggest Problem. So, so like GPS is really just accurate time, uh, and that that's how you you know how far you're away from it. Uh, but there's nothing like that by default in Bluetooth. Although, again, Bluetooth Five, I believe one of the intentions is to make it better for indoor navigation. Um, so, and maybe something like that. Never, no, I don't know. Oh, yeah. One quick one, you've got a Broadcom over there and then uh, Nordic NRF, uh, R do you use RTEL for the tech? Or can you comment on any compatibility issues in chipsets? Uh, well, so the, the, the whole thing with Bluetooth is there shouldn't, shouldn't be uh, any, any issues like that. They have, so, so Bluetooth is controlled by the Bluetooth special interest group. It's probably a longer answer than you really wanted. Um, but they, they have, if, if you want to sell something and call it Bluetooth, you have to be a member of them. And they have these big unplug fests where everybody turns up and makes sure that everybody's Bluetooth works with everybody else's Bluetooth. And that's why it's the standard, so it should all be good. It's more whether it's classic or BLE or whatever that tends to get you. One more, yep. If you were going to test it out, uh, in a worst case scenario, what would it be? Would it be sort of just the numbers involved and the proximity? Or where would it really test it out to see if it really worked? Like you talked about the museum situation, I can imagine lots of people walking around. Is that sort of one of the main problems? Uh, no. Uh, I mean, so Bluetooth is, is kind of designed for those noisy, noisy environments. Um, so it has frequency hopping and encoding and, and lots of stuff within it. So generally it works uh, quite well. Um, the, the problem in museum locations, etc., is if you're doing it a beacon and you're trying to work out proximity using the signal strength, it turns out humans 
are really good at stopping the signal. So, uh, so it turns out if you sort of are facing the beacon like this and you turn around like that, it thinks you've got over the other side of the room because you're, you're really good at um, sort of dampening the signal strength. Uh, so, so that's the problem. But, but actually, if you're sending data, which is what we're doing here, Bluetooth is, is really good. And people ask, uh, ask me about range. Uh, so uh, David Whale and there's a Martin Woolley were doing some stuff on Twitter, and they were in open space uh, trying to see how far they could get it. And generally, they would run out of open space uh, before, before the, the, the range uh, kind of lost. But if you're in a house, it's normally about a wall and a half is, is what it can, can go through. Walls and people generally stop the signal pretty, pretty well. Right, I think that, that's a good call. Thank you. Thank you.